Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to call this first meeting of the Laverne Library Board to order. My name is Evan Cope. I'm the city attorney for the city of Laverne. And for the purposes of nominating uh, a chairperson of this board, I'm going to serve as the incorporator so that a chairperson can be elected. So my role is very limited in terms of sitting in this seat. Uh, at this point in time, the first order of business is to elect the chairperson of this Laverne Library Board. And I will open the floor up to consider motions for nominations of chairperson. Donna Toons. Donna Toons. Donna Bebout. There's been a motion made that Donna Bebout be nominated the chairperson of the board. Do I hear a second? I second. Second is made. All those, any discussion? All those in favor of electing Donna Bebout, please signify so by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations. I'm going to turn the chair over now to the new chairperson. Great. <laughs> Thank you all very much, and I hope to serve you in a very proud way, and I know that we're going to be a very great working board together. The second order of business that we have is to elect a vice chairman for a one-year term. Term, I would like to open the floor for any nominations. I'd like to nominate Sherry Green. I'll second. Okay, we have a nomination and a second that Sherry Green would be our vice chairman. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, Sherry, you are our vice, pres our vice chairman. The third order of business that we have is a discussion on the legal issues, the sunshine law, the ethics policy, et cetera, and this will be facilitated by our city attorney, Evan Cope. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I'm going to come around to the podium because I think it will be easier for me to speak to you from this angle. Thank you. Uh, I want to first of all touch on just a few things and, and obviously we understand that this is a new board for the city of Laverne and I think it's going to be important for all of you that serve on it to understand what your role is. Okay, It's different from the way that, that the boards have operated in, in the past. Now in each of your packets you should have a copy of the ordinance that was adopted by the Board of Mayor and Alderman a few months ago that established this board. So what I'd like to do is to have everybody's attention focused on that for the, for the moment. And let's talk about what this board is. And what I'm specifically going to point you out is, is Section 2-804, which are the power and duties of the Laverne Library Board. And I'm going to read it, and then we're going to talk about it. The members of the Laverne Library Board shall organize by electing officers and adopting bylaws and regulations. The board shall direct all the affairs of the library, including appointment of a librarian, who shall direct the internal affairs of the library and such assistance or employees as may be necessary. Such board may make and enforce rules and regulations and establish branches of travel service at its discretion. Such board may receive donations, devices, bequests to be used by it directly for library purposes. The library board shall furnish to the state library agency such statistics and information as may be required and shall make annual reports to the board of mayor and aldermen and any and all such other reports as required by law. Annually, the library board shall submit a budget in, con in conformance with the charter and ordinances of the city of Laverne to the city administrator, who shall forward the same to the board of mayor and aldermen. All city tax funds and appropriate fees for library pur purposes, whether raised by bonds or taxation, shall be held by the city treasurer or appropriate designee. Such funds may be dispersed when properly drawn upon by vouchers or requisitions. Proceeds from the sale of surplus books by the library may be credited to such special fund in the discretion of the library board. 
All library accounts of every character and kind shall be audited annually by or under the supervision and direction of the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. So that, that outlines what your powers are, and I'm gonna to try to sum it up for you uh, in, in some layman's terms. You, you are governing the library independent and apart from any other arm of the city government, okay? This is different from in times past. You had the power to appoint the librarian who then hires and fires employees of the Laverne Library. You control the library budget, you control how the money is being spent. The control for the practical purpose of what the Board of Mayor and Alderman has over this board is simply how much money to designate to the library. Okay, beyond that point, this, this board runs the Laverne Library. Okay, so just in terms of your own mental picture, you shouldn't think of it as a necessarily a department of city government, but as an owned independent entity. Okay, now obviously library employees are city employees also. And so we're gonna have to work through when we adopt our bylaws and adopt rules and regs, we're gonna have to walk through some of these issues. Uh, but I think it's important to kind of have a global perspective on what the power of this board is and what it is you're here to do. Um, as members of a board, especially a board that has this much power, you need to be aware of what your ethical obligations are and you need to be aware of what the sunshine law is, okay? As members of the library board, you are all subject to the sunshine law and you're all subject to the Laverne ethics policy that was adopted a few years ago. Now, I don't have a copy of that for you in your packets, but I'm sure that Bruce and I can get that to you. Would ask that each and every one of you read it and make sure that you abide by it. Now, in terms of the Sunshine Law, it's, it's a complicated topic, but I'm gonna to try to boil it down to what I think is practically what you need to know. The Sunshine Law prohibits members of a board with, with decision-making authority, with decision-making ability, like what you have here today, from, from having a conversation or discussing or communicating, whether electronically, in person, or otherwise, any matter that is business pending before the board, okay? meaning that if you ran into one another at Kroger, uh, two or more of you, uh, you could not communicate about any item or action that uh, was coming before this board. Everything has to be in, in, in an open meeting of the sunshine, and that's kind of the basis for it. Sometimes people think that email, and, and some of you may have gotten, gotten email from me where I may email several people and say, please don't, if you have questions, don't email me back directly where you've copied everybody else because you can violate the Sunshine Law electronically as well as in person. So email and telephone count for that also, okay? Um, and in terms of, of touching on the, le the legal issues, I want you all to know that I'm here, hopefully you all know my telephone number. Me or a representative from my office will be at every single one of these meetings so that if you have any questions whatsoever, any of you, uh, you call, don't hesitate to call and ask, okay? And we'll be happy to give you the guidance, whatever guidance that we can give you. Um, I want to urge you all to be patient with the process. Uh, I think we need to recognize that because this is a new undertaking, there are going to be kinks uh, in, in, in the way this kind of unfolds. But I, I think if we all uh, look at this from the standpoint of uh, uh, a work in progress and, and getting this board off the ground, uh, and in that spirit, this is going to go very, very well. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have at this point. And I'll obviously be here for the rest of the meeting, but that's the points I wanted to touch on. Thank okay. you. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the motion to adopt bylaws for the Laverne Library Board. Madam Chairman, this may be something that, that the board wants to discuss in general. I. I know that the, uh, we, we don't have any current bylaws is my understanding. And so I think an order of business between now and the next meeting would be to, pre to prepare a draft set of bylaws uh, okay. for this board to consider adopting for your operation. Okay. So we will have those ready for our next meeting. Yes, ma'am. The fifth item on the agenda is the motion to appoint a librarian. Evan, if you can elaborate a little bit on that, please. Yes, ma'am. As, as the Laverne Library Board, you have the authority to appoint the li librarian. That's your decision to make. Um, 
you know, at this point, <coughs> excuse me, you uh, can take se several different approaches. You can appoint, and the, and the librarian serves at your pleasure, okay? So you could collectively hire the librarian, and you could collectively dismiss the librarian. Uh, you can hire a permanent librarian, or you can hire an interim librarian if you want to conduct a search for a librarian. Uh, those are your options, and so really it's up to y'all to discuss and then decide how you want to proceed. Yes. So at this point, uh, Teresa Wilbershot has been acting as interim librarian. Do I have a motion that Teresa continues as our interim librarian until this job posting is complete? And then we would be able to appoint a librarian, a director at that time? Could, could we possibly put a time frame on it? Yes, that would so be. We don't, so we don't hang it out for months? Absolutely. Please, uh, no. <laughs> we don't need to hang it out for months. It's, I think the library's been in limbo long enough. Absolutely. Uh, at this point, the job posting is posted for one week. And after that week, then a decision could be made. So at our next meeting, Evan, would that be acceptable? then we would be able to appoint the director at that time. Any discussion? Okay. What do you need to say? I don't think there was a second. Okay, do I have a second on this? I'll second. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. All in agreement. please say aye. 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 Anyone with a nay? Okay, thank you. Now, to go along, our next item of, of business is a motion to establish a meeting location and a schedule. To my knowledge, we will be videotaping all of the library board meetings. So the location is, will be at the city hall boardroom. And we do need to make a schedule of when we will be meeting. Do we have any discussion on, on a schedule, on a day and time? The, I'm sorry. Does anybody have work-related issues with 430? I know, I know work for the city when you get off at 4, it gives you 30 minutes to get here. Do, do you have a problem with 430? Sorry. Four, that's mm -hmm. Four thirty. So uh, we have established that 430 would be a good time. And then we need to establish a day of the month. And at this point, I do believe that once monthly would be a good time. Um, any discussion on that? I mean, probably until we get everything off the ground, monthly would be the best. Okay. And I would ask that we um, ask Bruce for a recommendation as far as a date so there's not a conflict with any other meetings. Or right. Very good. Be Absolutely. Madam so, Chairman, it, yes. it's kind of hard to, to pick one day a month that doesn't already have something scheduled okay. for the remainder of the year. Uh, of course, this meeting is two days after the Mayor Alderman meeting, which is typically the first Tuesday of the month. Most months that would be a good day. I believe that's also the day the former library board used to meet, uh, that being the first Thursday of every month. That will conflict at times with the Mayor Alderman workshops and the occasional uh, month where we have to move the regular meeting due to okay. elections or other events. Um, usually the second week of the month, uh, there's not a lot that goes on during that week. Uh, whether it's Tuesday or Thursday, it doesn't really matter, but you can always make it you know, another night of the week if you so choose. 
Um, the third Monday of the month, we always have planning uh, parks and rec advisory committee meetings, right. and sometimes uh, the Greenway advisory committee meetings. Uh, but I think that's the only Monday of the month where we have a regularly scheduled meeting. Um, so I would almost be in favor of recommending that you choose a Monday other than the third one, obviously, because of parks and rec. But that's just my initial recommendation. If you'd rather have it on a Tuesday or Thursday, that's entirely up to you. Okay, uh, across the board, how does Monday look for everyone? A Monday afternoon at 4.30, and it would be the second, Bruce, second or second Monday of the month. Yeah, if you go through the, uh, the calendar I'm looking right now, I'm not really, uh, it looks it does like, look like September. Looks and December or November look like the two that seem to be conflicting. Okay. So at this time, it would serve us well to go ahead and do it, and then if we need to change, we could make that change when that time came. Okay. Do we have a motion that the library board will meet the second Monday of each month at 4.30 p.m.? in the boardroom of City Hall. I'll make a motion. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, it is carried. All right. Let's move on to number seven, motion to adopt rules and regulations for the use of the library. Teresa has included in our packet a policy book, policy manual that she has diligently been working on. Um, as interim, Teresa, would you like to discuss a little bit about the policy manual? Sure. Um, it's just general outline of the rules that we already have in place, some rules that I think would be good for us to have in place, um, discussion about use of the library and in terms of that. Um, patron rights, staff rights, that kind of thing. Great. Did everyone have an opportunity to look over the policy manual? Uh, Teresa sent the packet to us a little over a week ago, mm -hmm. I think. A couple of weeks. Okay. One thing I'd like to ask our attorney is the, um, we talked about the Child Protection Act is referenced on the computer and internet policy. I know the library currently does not get the funds that actually allow them to be, to require that portion anymore. So I'm not sure if technically we have a complete legal standing to be able to reference that. Tell, tell me what page that's on. Uh, that would be on page 12. Now I know we have the option or that we can choose to be able to use those policies and those guidelines, but I just want to make sure that we actually have a complete legal standing now that we're no longer getting those federal funds that required us to have that in place, um, that we're not going to go on. Because I know referencing back to just some articles on, AL on American Library Association webpage, there's been some legal challenges about libraries limiting solely based on that and not having a secondary set of criteria mm -hmm. as to how you can get around the content filter. Well, I, you know, I, I haven't researched the issue, but I, I can tell you that my initial reaction is, is that just because you're not required, I mean, if you're not receiving the funding and you're not required, doesn't mean you couldn't adopt that as a policy anyway. Okay. I mean, that's, so you wouldn't be prohibited from adopting it. You just wouldn't be required to. Exactly. Looks like a pretty good policy, though. Yes, I think uh, American Child Protective or Children's Protective Act refers to pretty much not allowing access to those type of sites. Whereas there's also something in those articles on ALA, on ALA site referencing that you have to allow a means by request for access to those sites. So there's a, almost a con contradiction in terms on those. So I'm not sure if we actually completely have a basis to stand on. We can adopt that policy, but do we still have to have those additional ways out. I, I, I don't know the answer to that. I have to yeah. research. So. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll have to look into it. Mm -hmm. so. 
But I mean, in terms of, I mean, for, for purposes of what you're doing today, I mean, there's, there's no reason, right. in my opinion, that you couldn't have it. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, do we have any other discussion? Did you want to bring, did, did you want to bring up that statement? Well, I was just looking at where it says that Manual. Um, we've had questions recently about use of our meeting room, which we stopped allowing some time back. Um, and I guess appropriate use would be defined by behavior. You know, we don't want people coming in and tearing up our material, or you know, I, th I think it's a judgment call, really. Or I guess it would be for the board to decide what's appropriate use of the materials and facilities. Any other discussion about the policy manual? At this time, do I have a motion to adopt the rules and regulations for the use of the library? Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? All opposed? Okay, this is carried. Number eight, we have discussion, uh, preparation and presentation of a budget. Teresa, we'll go back to you. Okay, um, received the budget packet from Phyllis a little over a week ago, and I did meet with her this past Monday. Um, you have four pages regarding budget in front of you. The first is about the 110 account. Um, I did make a few changes, nothing major, but I kept the bottom line the same. I moved some money around from different areas, increased the book budget a little bit, um, put some money into employee education and training, which was lacking, and I think that's something that is definitely needed. Um, but nothing much really changed, increased the audiobook budget some also. Okay, did everyone have an opportunity to look over the budget? Do we have any discussion? Okay. And this does not call for a motion of any kind, correct? Yes, ma'am. This, this is a discussion. At some point, you're going to have to present a budget to the to the okay. Board of Mayor and Aldermen so that they'll know what your request is in terms of money, and then they don't have to comply with it, but that's, you need to present a budget to them okay. at some point. But this, this is just to get the ball rolling. Just to get, yeah. Okay, excellent. Okay, so do go ahead and look very carefully over the budget and at our next meeting. If you have any questions, we'll be happy to go over those more thoroughly. I would like to bring up right now, though, that you might want to look at your maintenance budget. That's extremely low. <laughs> We just get a bill for a new condenser for our large air conditioner, um, so the, the maintenance may have to increase a little okay. bit. Okay. And that's a good point. Those are things to, to look at and to go forth. Very good. Okay, number nine. We're going to have discussion on the removal of the state-owned items. To me. Um, you also have in your packet of materials a sheet entitled services provided to the Laverne Public Library by the Highland Rim Regional Library as of July 2009. It's a letter sized paper. Um, and all this is really, it breaks down what the region had been providing to us. Many of these services were stopped as of July when the decision was made for the library to sort of secede from the regional library. Um, that's still a work in progress, but we have been deleting region materials since this date. Um, we're almost done. They're coming and picking things up probably monthly. Um, we don't have very much left, maybe 900 items in total. 
and it, you can't tell anything's missing. Nobody's complained about the shelves looking bare, about things that they want not being available to them. So it's it's not affecting our patrons negatively in any way. So I, I think it's going to be fine. Excellent. And that, that was a concern it when was. this first came up. And Teresa and her staff have done an excellent job of <laughs> replacing those items as they have been removed. Do we have any discussion from the board on the removal of state-owned items? And do you have a clear understanding of what's happening? There are a couple of different ways that they provided materials to us. One was with a rotating collection that they would change out quarterly. That was stopped in July. Um, another way is they occasionally provided funds that were given from the state, and we have had nothing given to us monetarily for the past three years. Okay. I guess my only question is, do we, is this something that we need to replace, and are we figuring out? I've been replacing replace. some of the materials, the things that I thought would still be needed, current, popular. Um, but a lot of their materials are dated and in poor condition anyway. So they're things that would have been weeded naturally anyway. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. All right. Evan, at this time... We adjourn. Our next meeting, yes, sir. I've got, I've got one question. I put in front of everyone on the board. I went to the Nashville Public Library. They, uh, they charge fifty dollars for anyone that has is uh, lives outside of Davidson County. I want, if you would please look over this and let's consider putting some putting some charge, some type of charge to our library cards uh, for out of anybody that lives out of Laverne. The, I don't want to charge no way, no how, any child or, or, or adult that lives inside of Laverne, and I don't even think we can. But, you know, times are getting tough, and I don't know how much money that the city is going to be able to give us, and we need to start looking for ways to, to come up with some revenue. These people live across in Davidson County. I think they have about 10 to 15 libraries that they can go to. And on the other hand, I don't want any child to ever want a library book and not be able to get it. But I do think if you will take the time and ride through the parking lot of the Laverne Library, any given day, the majority of the people in that parking lot are Davidson County tags. And I think I'm big on everybody paying their own way. So please think about it. And I would like to consider on the next meeting okay. imposing some sort of charge. For information purposes, it might be nice to ask Teresa to actually bring yes. us the statistics from by zip code. About 65% of our patrons do live in the city of Laverne, so Excellent. that would mean about 34% outside of the city. Excellent. Go. Good job, Teresa. Mm -hmm. my, my next question is probably for Mr. Cope. The, uh, the monies that we receive off the cards, can we roll back into our library, or does it have to go into the general fund? No, the, the money that you, that you get from li for library purposes stays with the library. Okay. In fact, I, don't, I, I won't say never, ever, but uh, it's hard for me to sit here now and think of a set of circumstances where you would end up having to put money back in the general fund. I can't, I'm not saying it doesn't exist, I just can't conceive of it right now. One thing, if you know, ask him in regards to it. I know there's been some discussion back and forth as far as when there were city purchase materials, and they were through this money that the Laverne Library could not auction them, as in directly into their book sale had to be first auctioned through the city means because they were purchased with those funds. Now, if they were donated items, they could go directly to the book sale. If they were 
items purchased out of their like 124 account could go straight to the book sale. But anything purchased out of 110 had to be purchased, had to be first auctioned through the city procedures because it came through tax money. That was the direction pushed by impasse. Like if you don't mind, if you could research into that so we can get a complete clarification for the board and actually hopefully put that to rest for a future. to the government auction so if right. we could put the things that we purchased with the 124 funds back into the library directly that would be wonderful. Let's get some clarification across the board as to okay. which ones exactly need to go. I think it would be beneficial. So we will look to put that on the agenda for next month, the clarification. And also, uh, in the meantime, if all of you would do a little research on the different libraries, this is great that you found this at, at Nashville Public. Uh, perhaps do some other research with different libraries. We'll present this at the next meeting. Teresa, if you will also do a little research, that would be great. And then we can also put that on the agenda for next month's meeting. But I think, you know, I think we should be considering the, uh, the amount that we want. Correct, those. yes. I mean, times are tough everywhere, and what's, what's fair? Correct. So, it's in the, uh, the uh, second paragraph. Library cards are free to all res mm -hmm. residents of Davidson County and persons living within the Goodnessville city limits. To obtain a library card, you must present an ID with your current address. Three, 50 bucks per year. Per year. Yeah. And we could, I mean, I think that our, our library could buy a lot of books and tapes and whatever we're losing from, from the state. We can replace it all with this. I think it would. I think it really would. So while we are also researching the libraries, re let's research the cost and be thinking about what we feel would be a fair amount, Absolutely. but also yes. that would help the library. So we will definitely put that on the agenda for next month. You're welcome. Okay, do we have any other discussion? If not, thank you all so much for being here and being a part of the board. And uh, I know that we're going to be a great working board for the library. We're very proud of the library and the beautiful building and the wonderful books that are there and the great staff that staff the, the library. So at this time, we will adjourn. And we will meet back the second, two, second Monday of May at 4.30. Thank you.